All right, Alexander, let's talk a little bit about Venezuela. Um, the crisis is ongoing. It's deepening. I, I, I have my doubts if Maduro is going to last. I don't know. Um, you can give us your thoughts on this. But we had a statement from uh, Mike Pompeo as well. And Pompeo made a very interesting comment, the Secretary of State for the United States. He said that Hezbollah has active cells in Venezuela. Wow. Is, is this, I mean, is he setting up, is, is he pulling a Colin Powell, this is anthrax, WMD kind of moment here for, for U.S. intervention in Venezuela? Is this what this is about? Soon he's going to be telling us that ISIS I, I is there. Think, <laughs> I think, mean. well, I agree. I mean, I have to say, I mean, I find that wildly far-fetched. Now, Venezuela has good relations with Iran, and Venezuela uh, uh, has good relations with all sorts of countries, and Iran, as we know, which has good relations with Venezuela, has a connection with Hezbollah. But the re idea that Hezbollah has a significant presence in Venezuela is, is beyond far-fetched. It really looks to me like an attempt to basically set up a scenario for some kind of action in Venezuela. Now, you said that you have your doubts about whether Maduro will last. I also have those doubts. The economy is in a mess. There's now tightening sanctions. There's going to be real problems. Venezuela is going to have real problems exporting its oil and getting paid for its oil. The oil that it's trying to ship to uh, Russia and China is not suitable for Russian and Chinese refineries because it's so heavy. So there's going to be, and, and I understand that some of the sanctions that the United States has imposed on Venezuela are going to make it very difficult for the Venezuelans to process their own oil domestically. So I expect several weeks or months down the line, we're going to see an even deeper economic crisis in Venezuela and whether the government of Venezuela around Maduro can continue to hold together, I don't know. I too have big doubts about it. But it seems to me that what Pompeo is now saying, he's sort of flagging up, is uh, preparing the ground for Plan B, which is presumably some kind of military intervention in the event the Plan A, which is the suffocation of, of Venezuela through sanctions, fails. Yeah, I think you're right, because I'll read you another quote <clears throat> from uh, Navy Admiral Craig Fowler, the head of the U.S. Southern Command, said during a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing, he said, we are prepared to protect U.S. personnel and diplomatic facilities if necessary. Is Plan B mm. fully in, in, in well, effect now for, for a possible military yeah. intervention should something happen? Well, I... Well, again, I, I have to say that's that's what that looks like to me. C can I say, can I remind people right at the start of this crisis, after Donald Trump recognized Guaido, uh, Maduro moved to expel U.S. diplomats from Venezuela. They refused to leave um, and, and they remained at the embassy. And um, the rumor I have heard is that the Chinese and the Russians advised Maduro to take no action against them. Because they said if you do that, the U.S. will uh, consider that as providing a green light for the U.S. to intervene militarily to protect its diplomats. So Maduro backed off. Now, that seems to me to uh, uh, um, uh, ramp the pressure up. This comment from the Admiral ramps the pressure up from Maduro even more. And it now floats the option of military action rather more openly than it has been done up to now. And obviously, at the moment, it's about protecting U.S. lives and U.S. diplomats and U.S. property and U.S. citizens. But we have seen how these things can evolve in other places and how they can evolve into, uh, you know, the need to protect Venezuelan civilians, Venezuelan people, uh, politicians like Guaido, uh, 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 and things of that kind. So, and a, a softening up for possible future action. Guaido has been courting uh, China very heavily, and Russia as well. He's made many statements where yeah. he said that Russia and China have a much better future in Venezuela with him at the helm. Yeah. When do you think, or I say when, just 
I, I blurted it out because I, I really think it's coming to an end. Yeah. If and when do you think that China or Russia may actually say they may actually be having their doubts and may actually say, you know, these guys, Maduro just can't hold up anymore. He's far away. We don't have the capital to prop him up. He's on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. you know, the pressure is just too great. The pressure is just too great. Also, I have to say this, and I, I, I know this may not be popular with some of our viewers. I don't think the Russians and the Chinese are very impressed by Maduro. I think they see the economic crisis in Venezuela, and they consider the fact that they consider that he hasn't listened very well to advice, and he hasn't run very Venezuela competently. Yes, sanctions have played a role. But I, I read a very interesting commentary by, uh, um, a, by a Russian in a Russian analysis, which said, look, Syria came under far more pressure than Venezuela has ever done. But they never, never had hyperinflation there mm -hmm. because Assad and his government know how to run an economy. Maduro doesn't. And when you said that they are beginning to have doubts, they might be starting to have doubts at some point about Maduro's longevity. It's a very interesting article in Bloomberg, which is uh, based on Russian sources, which say that the Russians are, in fact, starting to have doubts about uh, uh, Maduro's longevity and are beginning to wonder whether he's going to be there for very long. And, of course, Guaido is reaching out to them I don't think the Russians and the Chinese uh, trust Guaido an inch, but I mean, it's possible that they might conclude at some point that this isn't really going to work with Maduro. They can't really help him realistically. Any money they give him is going to be good money, throwing good money after bad that they might as well see whether they can cut some kind of a deal with Guaido in a country which, after all, is in the U.S.'s backyard and where China and Russia have only limited influence. Yeah, because, I mean, it, 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 there may be a lot of stuff that we're saying that may be unpopular because at the end of the day, yes, this is a, regi a regime change. Absolutely. And, you know, obviously, for, for multiple reasons, you know, you don't, you don't want regime changes. No to occur anywhere i mean it's you know following international for, for multiple reasons whether it's a moral reason or international law you know simplistically put regime changes don't work out and they have a variety of, of very bad consequences that come out of them but being realistic and looking at the tea leaves here it looks like yeah. that, that the cards are, are are stacked heavily against the deck is stacked heavily against maduro and we're talking about plan b's what yeah. do you think, if you had to analyze this situation, what do you think Russia and China's plan B is as they're sitting there and saying, you know, Maduro, I don't know if he's going to make it. Let's let's figure out how we can get something out of this or somehow land on our feet in this in this situation with Venezuela. They don't have many options. I think what they're going to try and do for the moment is that they're going to try and, uh, and broker some kind of negotiations between uh, uh, Maduro's government and Guaido and the opposition. And they're going to try, perhaps, and talk to some of the other opposition leaders in Venezuela and try and persuade them to put pressure on Guaido to compromise and also uh, in order to try and get some kind of, perhaps, eventually, national unity government together i think the odds against that succeeding are immense and i predict the u.s will be very opposed so i don't think it will work but i think that is their plan at the moment if it doesn't work i suspect that they will at some point if they do start to think that the uh, um, situation in venezuela is such that maduro's position is simply unsustainable. I think they will start putting pressure on him to negotiate with Guaido an orderly transfer of power so that when that happens, they will then hope to manage to persuade Maduro to go uh, and do it in a peaceful way so that you're able to take over a functioning country rather than a country that may have descended into total civil war. I think that is what the Russians and the Chinese will do. They won't be happy about this. They won't like it at all. They don't like regime change. But they will be able to comfort themselves that if they do that, 
then it would at least appear outwardly as if the forms have been preserved and that it will not be too obviously or too blatantly a coup, though that is, of course, in reality what it will be. Yeah, it is a coup. <clears throat> There's no doubt about that. But yeah. uh, going back to some some more realistic analysis of what's going yes. on, some real politic. Yes. If this coup yes. does does end up successful, there is no, yes. God forbid, there's yeah. no civil war, there's no violence. Guaido ends up, you know, taking over the government yeah. of Venezuela. Is this a big win for Trump and Bolton? Absolutely. I mean, no question about it. I'll predict one thing, by the way. I don't think Guaido will be president of Venezuela for very long. I think he's the sort of person who's been put up to do it mm -hmm. in order to, to basically destabilize Maduro right. because he doesn't have uh, much history behind him. But I suspect stronger personalities will emerge, but they will align Venezuela with the United States. We've seen this happen in, in uh, uh, um, Ecuador, where we've seen a, a, um, a, a, a left-wing government that was pro-Russian and pro-Chinese, replaced by a right-wing pro-American government. And of course, we've seen this happen in, in a very big way now in Brazil. in Brazil. So, I mean, this whole thing that we were seeing a few years ago, and which I, I, by the way, should say I was never a great believer in it. But all this sort of pink tide that was supposed to be flowing across Latin America, that has completely and decisively reversed. And if or when Maduro lo leaves power, that will be absolutely uh, 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 conclusive. There'll be just one or two little outliers like Brazil, B Bolivia and Nicaragua left and frankly, their history, their future doesn't look very bright, would not look very bright either. And finally, Alexander, to wrap it up, um, I gave my thoughts as to how I see things. You kind of hinted at how you see things. Can you, be, can you elaborate a little further? Do you think that Maduro will not last or do you think that he'll somehow yeah, no. make it out of it uh, and stay in power? To, to be honest, I don't see how he can last. Uh, um, I mean, at, 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 uh, um, in the short term, He's managed to keep to hold things together surprisingly well. The army is still backing him. The police is still backing him. The diplomatic service is still backing him. There is still some support for him, clearly, in the working class and rural areas. But everybody in Venezuela now knows that they have against them the implacable power of the United States. The United States is overwhelmingly the dominant power in this region. At the same time, they also know that Maduro has been an incompetent president. We have to face that. That is what he has been. And I think inevitably, as things begin to wear down, as oil supplies begin to run out, as food becomes increasingly short, as the pressure increases, I think the temptation for more and more people in the diplomatic service, in the military, in the police, to start cutting deals with the opposition, which it is quite clear Maduro can't round, round up at the moment. He can't arrest them. Um, sooner or later, that pressure will grow and we will see the whole thing start to crack. I, I don't know how long it will take. But I have to say, that seems to me the likeliest prospect. And I think everybody who's following this affair needs to be prepared for it. And right now, it's, it's kind of in a slow burn. But usually when these things take place, once it starts to crack a little, it's, it's usually a fast process, correct? Like Absolutely. Maybe like once someone in the military defects or a diplomat defects, it starts to snowball. Is that, is that what viewers that should be on the lookout here? That, that is exactly correct. I mean, this thing could run on for several weeks or even months, <laughs> and then suddenly w w the whole thing will collapse, like implode like a house of, of, of cards. Um, I think that the Russians and the Chinese are very well aware of that, and that's why I said I either broker a compromise between Maduro and the opposition or try to persuade Maduro to uh, uh, make an orderly exit before we reach that point. But if he tries to dig in,
I think the greater probability is, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's a certainty, I don't know Venezuela well enough, but I think the greatest probability is that that is what will happen. We will see this whole thing start to break, break down and implode quickly, like a house of cards. All right. Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on that notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Durant shop, pick up a t-shirt, help support the Durant. And of course, the description box down below, you will find links to our PayPal and Patreon pages. Please donate to the Durant. That helps us out a lot. And you can get a copy of this video in audio formats on iTunes and SoundCloud. So follow us there. And don't forget to go to the Durant.com and see the articles that Alexander Mercurius is looking up to every day. Alexander Mercurius, editor-in-chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.